Well, good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Morning Report. My name is William Lawson. The Morning Report is production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. It just never stops. And as we get closer, and I warned you guys, as we get closer to November, it's going to get worse. <laughs> like it's possible. Like, can it possibly get worse? Yes. Yes. And it's going to. Um, a, um, a a tweet came out from the uh, from Joe Biden on X. Now we know what we know. It isn't that Joe Biden is pre- the president isn't sitting there, you know, at his desk or on or on his BlackBerry tweeting anything. We know that, right? Everybody knows that, right? Here's the he, here's a tweet. Donald Trump attempted to overthrow an election. Wants to be a dictator on a on day one. Has promised revenge and retribution if he wins and the supreme court he appointed just gave him virtual unlimited immunity to do it now what we know is what we really know is that no matter what you feel about donald trump none of that's true right none of that's true the supreme court did not give donald trump immunity to do whatever he wanted to do to turn him into a dictator. They did not. They did not. Uh, whoever is behind this this X account, Joe, uh, Joe Biden, is basically feeding in, continuing to feed into the, the paranoid, get upset, get crazy culture. We'll, we'll, we'll call that the get crazy culture on things that aren't true, that they know aren't true. Now, I'm going to, uh, with the help of Kyle Becker, at Kyle Becker, go through 10 things, put that right there so I can see it, um, that debunk everything in this tweet. All right, number one. Trump did not send in armed tr- protesters to overthrow the government. That did not happen. As a matter of fact, of all the people that were arrested, do you know how many firearms they um they collected from those people? Do you know? I'll tell you. Zero. None. Not one. Nobody had a firearm. Nobody, nobody had a firearm. So it would seem that if people came to overthrow the government that day and overthrow the National Guard or the Capitol Guard and the uh, Metro Police Department, somebody would have brought somebody would have brought something, right? Saturday night, a, a Saturday night special, something. Nobody had anything. They didn't have swords. They, I mean, save the one dude with the horns. With it. Nobody had anything. They collected zero weapons. Amazingly, Ashley Babbitt still got shot to death. Number two. Protesters had no means to overturn the election. They had, first of all, the election had already happened. They had no means. Again, they were completely unarmed. They had absolutely no way to overturn the election. They could have been there. They could have raised all sorts of hell. They could have tossed over garbage cans and kicked over, uh, kicked over barricade. It would have been in no way, shape or form, changed the outcome of the election. That's simply not true. And all it takes is, I don't know, just slow down for a second, put your bias aside for just a minute and think, well, how was that? How was that going to work? They were going to go in there if they had, maybe if they had guns, if maybe if everybody had a musket and bayonets, but they did not. Did you, you watch the videotapes? You saw the videotapes. I'm old. You saw the recordings. You saw, you saw all the videos. Did you see anybody with good? You see uh, the, the protesters you know, hiding behind the barricade, kicking off the revenuers? Did not. 
You know why? Because it didn't happen. Which is why they had to say some um, capital guardmen, guardsmen were killed. They were not. Uh, there was a suicide, I believe, and there was also a, a somebody who died of a heart attack late, later, I believe. So, if you say the protesters are responsible for that person having a heart attack, it's like saying, so when you go into Target and you have a disagreement with a clerk about the price of something, and then you find out that that person went home and had a heart attack, that somehow you're responsible for it because you got them all excited? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense either, does it? All right, number three. The riots interrupted the election challenges. The riot actually interrupted the challenges or what would have been the challenges to the election. The riot, this is what, if anything, if Trump is trying to challenge the election, the, the, the chaos actually interrupted that part. Huh? Anyway, it was his only way of remaining in office was to let the challenge if the challenges had gone through, but all the all the rioting interrupted that process. Obviously, he didn't want that. Anyway, number four, we've seen a million times that Trump actually asked his audience to go down there peacefully. He didn't say go down there and raise hell. He didn't say go down there and take over. Go down there and break windows. Didn't say anything about that. Oh, by the way, I have it on good authority that the windows on the first floor of the Capitol are bulletproof and probably can't be broken with a chair. Anyway. Uh, number five. Trump could not have incited a planned riot. It couldn't have done it. Somebody let that happen. Some people believe it was the FBI. What do you think? Number six. Again, the rioters didn't kill anybody. Now, they're being blamed on, 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 on the death of, of some Capitol Guard um, and I think a Metro police officer, but they didn't kill anybody. The only person that got killed uh, that was shot was Ashley Babbitt, a pro an unarmed protester. And the reason why the, the left and the media didn't go, go go bananas is because she was a white woman. She was unarmed. And she was murdered. Trump's legal challenges were all legit and constitutionally valid. There are There is a way to challenge. This idea that you just... Okay, well, whatever. Well, although you don't think that's true, that should never that should never be the case. There should always be avenues by which one can challenge. Now, it may offend your sensibilities when someone does, but that's on you. That's not on the on the system of the process or even the person who's challenging. That's on you if that offends your your sensibilities. If that makes you uncomfortable, well, that's just like the man said. That's just too damn bad. Number eight, and as soon as the election was certified, Trump, of course, said, all right, it is what it is. They didn't have to drag Trump out of the office. They didn't have to send in the National Guard or the Secret Service to drag him out, you know, by his feet. That didn't happen. The narrative paints the picture that happened. They don't say it happened. They, it paints, paints the picture that it happened. He never conceded. So? He never said the words, I concede. You didn't have to. Again, this upsets your sensibilities. But who gives a damn about your sensibilities? Who cares? All right. Uh, that was number nine. Trump did step down without any call for violence or resistance. They just left. He never conceded. So? <laughs> so? If you actually believe that, if he actually believes that um, there was some um, 
funny business going on with the 2020 election. And it's like, mm -mm, no, I'm, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to suddenly say that there wasn't. Okay. Didn't have to. Again, offending some people's sensibilities. And eh, who cares? Uh, number 10, the argument that Trump tried to orchestrate a coup and overturn the election is, is based merely on fact-free delusion. It, it's amazing how quickly the media was calling it an armed insurrection and how they all passed that phrase around. Nancy Pelosi, all these people passed that phrase around, armed insurrection. When I just told you that when they, collect, when they started re arresting people, there, were, there weren't any weapons confiscated. Zero weapons confiscated. What about the pipe bomb? That was days earlier. And uh, no one knows who planted it. So this was hardly an armed insurrection. Hardly. Now, now you're going to ask me, do I think the 2020 election was, was fixed? What I think is that there is some things that in our election system that we that need be need be reviewed and need be looked at for sure. Frankly, it bothers me that Wisconsin is now allowing uh, a, a ballot drop boxes. That bothers me. Wisconsin is, me, has turned into a uh, battleground state, and now these unattended, unattended drop boxes, ballot boxes are going to be all over the state. I got to tell you, that bothers me. Where I live, at the supervisor of elections office, there is a ballot, a, a drop ballot box for people who don't want to get out of the car. But that ballot box is, uh, there's, there's an attendee there. It's in the open. Everybody can see it. It's only there during the day. At night, it's put away. And the ballots are taken out, I guess. But um, during the day, everybody can see it. Somebody could sit across in the parking lot if they wanted to and just keep eyes on it the entire day if they chose to. So I don't, I don't have any problem with that. But these ballot boxes that are out in front of buildings on the sides of roads, unattended for hours, actually the whole time, there's, there's not an official there you know, there's nobody there watching to see who puts what in. That's a problem. And you know what? And I tell you, if the shoe was on the other foot, the left would be screaming, can't have that as a problem. They would be. It's back to what I always say. No matter, and, and, you know what, in, the, in this level, at this level of politics, your guy, my guy good, your guy bad, even if they say or do the same thing. What do you think? Write it in the comments. My name is Willie Lawson. This is the Morning Report. Again, the Morning Report is production of fightbackmedia.com, 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 and fightbackmediatv.com. Until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We will see you when we see you. Bye-bye now.